Welcome to the level 1 economics summary video series. This video is a summary of the reading on demand and supply analysis, consumer demand. Utility theory explains consumer choice and behavior by combining the consumer preference which is indifference curves with affordable choices which is a budget constraint. The axioms or assumptions of this theory are number one, complete preferences. This means that a consumer will always be clear which bundle he prefers. So a consumer will say I prefer A or I prefer B or he says that A and B are equally preferred. A consumer will not say I don't know. So a consumer will always have an opinion when talking about two bundles. Transitive preferences means that if a consumer prefers A over B and B over C, then the consumer will prefer A over C. And non and non satiation, this means that for the consumer more is always better. Indifference curves are sets of combinations or bundles of goods among which a consumer is indifferent. All bundles of goods along an indifference curve provide the same utility or the same level of happiness. Indifference curves slope downwards. So if you have two goods X and Y, then generally this is the shape of the indifference curve. So as you give up Y, you are equally happy if you have more of X. A bundle with less of one good must have more of the other good to be equally preferred. Indifference curves are convex towards the origin. So if you sit at the origin and look, the curves will be convex. Successive reduction in the quantity of one good in the bundle require increasing quantities of the other good to keep utility constant. The point is that when you have lots of y, then you will give y and get x. But as you have less and less of y, then you will value y more. So to give the same amount of y, you will want more of x to be equally happy. That's why these curves are convex. And at any point, there will always be a marginal rate of substitution, which is the slope or the gradient at that point. When you see marginal rate of substitution, it will have two subscripts. If the two products are, let's say, B and C or X and Y, then the first subscript is one unit. So if marginal rate of substitution is three, this means that one unit of B is equal to three units of C. So remember that the first unit or the first subscript one unit. When you compare this with currency because now you are doing a review and you've seen currency, this is sort of like the base currency. For a single consumer, two indifference curves cannot cross. Preferences must be transitive. If A is preferred to B and B is preferred to C, then A must be preferred to C. Another way of saying it is that because of this assumption, the transitive preferences assumption, the indifference curves cannot cross. The budget line represents the combinations of two goods that will just exhaust a consumer's income. It bounds an area representing all affordable combinations of two goods at current prices. So this red line over here is the budget constraint. So to the left and bottom of this line is what is affordable. To the right of this line is what is not affordable. So when we combine the budget constraint, the red line, with the indifference curves, which are the green curves, then we can identify the most efficient bundle. So that most efficient bundle is where the budget line is tangent to an indifference curve. So notice this bundle E will give the highest level of utility. So a potential question on the exam will involve recognizing the slope of the budget constraint and setting that slope equal to the marginal rate of substitution. So here E is the optimal point. So this is the most preferred affordable bundle. Okay, so of all the affordable bundles, it's the one that the consumer would be happiest with. Point A represents the amount of quantity Y a consumer can get if he spends all his money on Y. Point B represents the amount of X the consumer can get if he spends all his budget on B. 
C and D are possible bundles that the consumer can get, but clearly then he is on this lowest indifference curve and he could be happier by going to E. So C and D are possible, but not optimal. Income and substitution effect. When the price of good X decreases, then we will have both a substitution effect and an income effect. The substitution effect will always shift the consumption towards more units of X. But the income effect depends on the nature of the good. And let's understand why we have an income effect. If the price of good decreases, then in real terms, you have more buying power, more income. So the impact of that higher real income is called the income effect. The income effect will cause more consumption of good X if X is a normal good. Income effect will cause less consumption of good X if good X is an inferior good. In the special case of a Giffen good, the negative income effect will be greater than the positive substitution effect. This means that for a Giffen good, a decrease in the price of good X will cause a decrease in its consumption. And this also means that we have a positively sloped demand curve. In the special case of a Veblen good, also called a status good, an increase in price increases the value to some consumers. Therefore, their quantity demanded decrease. Giffen goods and Veblen goods both have positively sloped demand curves, but for very different reasons. If you found this lecture helpful, then I'll be very grateful if you can do three things for me. Number one, like this video. Number two, like my Facebook page. And number three, visit analystforum.com and there add my logo to your studying with profile. You can see this slide for help on how to do that. Thank you very much and good luck with your studies.